Hi everyone. Smart motorways are sections of motorway that use technology to reduce congestion. And in today's video, we're going to have a look at them. So how do smart motorways reduce congestion? Well, they're not all working in the same way, but a lot of the time what they do, they use the old hard shoulder areas to produce another live running lane, which can be used when it's safe. Some of these smart motorways still retain the hard shoulder, like we've got here, but use the gantries up above to show the traffic and other road users of the variable speed limits in place. These variable speed limits are set by the highways agency. They monitor the section of smart motorway constantly. And if there's a problem, they'll slow the traffic and the speed limits down. But if it is safe, they'll allow everyone to continue at the national speed limit or 70 miles an hour. It is important that you obey the speed limits on these smart motorways. That's when we've got the actual red ring with the speed limit on. It's unlike the situation that we've got in front of us. This is just a warning. I'm not saying you should be careering down the motorway at a faster speed than 50, but it's totally different than the actual no more than 50 signs. But in this viewer's clip that we're gonna have a little look at now, my viewer decides to disobey the actual speed limits that are shown on a spark motorway because there was an unusual situation. I think his decision was actually pretty good. Let's have a look at the clip. My viewer was travelling along the M42 at normal speeds and the first indication there was a problem is when he saw these signs of an oncoming vehicle. Quite soon there was a further reduction in speed to 30 miles an hour and still warning of the oncoming vehicle and a little further still, the speed limit got reduced to 20. Luckily, most of the motorway sections were quite quiet, so when people did overtake, it's not too much of a big deal. Would you have felt a little pressure to go a little faster, especially when all the other vehicles were coming past a fair bit faster than you? This is speeded up, however. My viewer decided to stick to around 30, and that meant occasionally he was going to overtake some people. By doing this, you are risking a speeding ticket on these smart motorways with all the cameras about. But he told me he did it because he was wary of the speed of other vehicles catching from behind. And this wasn't the worst offender, by the way. Quite soon, we do see a police car approaching very quickly from behind. Does that mean the problem solved and they're going to intercept any oncoming car? Well, no, it doesn't. But what would you have done now? Would you have got back to a little higher speed? Would you have stayed to 20? Or would you have done what my camera did and stayed to around 30 to minimise any problems with people catching quickly up behind? One sign that you cannot ignore is the red cross that can be marked above your lane. That means do not drive in that lane. There could be someone broken down or an incident or an accident a little touch further up that you can't see. So don't take that gamble. If you are unlucky enough to break down on a smart motorway, try and do your best to get to the near side lane or lane one. If the hard shoulder has been turned into a live running lane, there will be emergency refuge areas on the left hand side. They're painted orange, so they're pretty visible, and they're spaced up to 1.5, maybe 1.6 miles apart. Sometimes they're a little closer together than that, but you should try and get to one of these if you can. Now, if you are able to get to one of these areas, Put your hazard lights on, that's a must, and then exit out of your car from the passenger side. That's just a safety little tip. The phones that are in these emergency refuge areas are directly linked to the highways agency, so you should give them a call, and then they're gonna give you further advice. If you break down and you're not able to get to an emergency refuge area, Try and still move to the left as much as you can because generally you're going to be a little safer 
on the left side of the road or the near side of the road and if there aren't barriers you can even choose to park your car up a verge because that's going to get you a little bit more space from the flowing lanes. If you're not able to make it to the near side of the road if you do break down the advice given is to stay in the lane that you're in. You should keep your seatbelt on you should then phone 999 and alert them of the danger that you're in. If you're really lucky after you've broke down you might get your car going again and you're able to continue your journey. It's a little bit more difficult exiting from emergency refuge areas than it is from the hard shoulder. On a hard shoulder you should build your speed and then fit in but those emergency refuge areas aren't very big so you've got to pick a good gap to actually fit. Now we're going to have a quick look at this viewers clip because this gives a good example of how not to do it. Watch the car emerge from the left side. That was no way in the world a big enough gap. It was a good job there was no one behind. And look at the size of the gap if he had just waited for my camera to pass. So what do I think of smart motorways? Well, honestly I don't use them that much. This is probably the second time I've been on a a journey anywhere on a motorway, a decent journey on a motorway, um, probably over the last couple of years, so I don't use them that much. Have I got that much experience of them? No. Do I think that they've reduced congestion? Well, honestly, no, I don't think they have. I think when we have sections that um, have used the hard shoulder as a running lane, people tend to use lanes three and four now, so lanes one and two are still clear. People still don't pay attention to the signs and use the appropriate lanes when they can. So for me, congestion, I'm not sure. I don't actually know for certain on the stats, but that could be an important point for another video that I do in the future. But for me, congestion, hmm, what do you think in the comments? Let me know what your experiences are. Breakdowns for me though are the sketchy part of smart motorways. If you think about that fear of breaking down in a live running lane, I wouldn't fancy that. However, I think it would be better on a smart motorway because you've always got that potential of being watched and picked up by the cameras rather than it happening on a normal motorway without this smart technology. And don't forget that's still a possibility that you couldn't get back to the near side. Situations like this though where we're using the old hard shoulder as a live running lane, um, if everything's fine it's not a big deal but again I've got doubts on how quickly the cameras and the technologies pick up on people um, and it still proves a danger on a daily basis when people travel down these smart motorways. Please let me know of your experiences and whether there's anything you've witnessed said you weren't warned and then suddenly this appears on you. I'm going to rely on forward planning. Um, I'm going to just have a chuckle again, smart motorways, I'm in lane one and everyone's using the other lanes. It's the norm, it's par for the course, um, but I'm going to rely on forward planning, I'm going to re rely on keeping a good space and hopefully we can survive this journey. Let us know what you think in the comments, hopefully that was useful and I'll see you soon.